Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve the Cauchy-Euler equation. Let's get started. Cauchy-Euler equation has this form. If we have x squared times the second derivative of y, we step x plus a constant times x times the first derivative of y, we step x plus a constant times y, and it's equal is equal to zero. This is one way to write this differential equation, but could be rewritten, rewrite like this, with the complete notation of the derivative. This derivative can be solved with a simple substitution, like we can assume that y is equal to x to the power r, for example. Then we can derivate that function twice and replace that, that expression in this differential equation. However, let's go to solve this problem with a different substitution. In this case, we'll have that the natural logarithm of x will be equals to t. So this involves that x is equals to e to the t. With this substitution, let's go to solve this Cauchy-Euler equation. In order to solve that, we need to calculate the derivative of y. In this case, we need to calculate the derivative of y with respect x. But we mustn't forget that we have this new variable. In this case, the new variable will be t. So if we want to calculate this derivative, we need to use the chain rule, like this. We have that the derivative of y with respect x is equal to the derivative of y with respect t times the derivative of t with respect x. So, in this case, we need to calculate this derivative. In order to do that, we must remember this substitution that we had at the beginning, and we need to derive this expression with respect to x. So we have this expression, the derivative of t with respect to x, it's equals to the derivative of the natural logarithm of x, it's equals to 1 over x. So in this case, we must find an expression for x. We have that expression in here x is equal to e to the t. So the derivative of t with respect x is equal to 1 over e to the t. Or simply the derivative of t with respect x is equal to e to the minus t. Now we have an expression to replace it in this, in this place. So if we substitute this expression in here, we have the derivative the of y with respect x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to t times e to the negative t. But we need also a substitution for the second derivative, so we need to derive it one more time. This expression can be rewrite like this as well. Finding the second derivative of y with respect to x that will be equals to, we need to use one more time the chain rule. So we'll have the derivative with respect to t of the first expression that we calculated previously times the derivative of t with respect to x. Also, we have this expression we've calculated previously that it's equals to e to the negative t, so we need to solve this other derivative. In order to solve this derivative, we need to use the product rule. Like this, the product rule says that it's the first term, no change, times the derivative of the second term. We have the derivative of the derivative, so that it's the second derivative of y plus the second derivative times the derivative of the first term. 
the derivative of the first term will be negative e to the negative t. And all of this times the derivative of t with respect x. But we know that this term is equals to e to the negative t. Solving these operations, in here we can multiply this expression and we get these other terms. Just we have in here negative times positive, that is negative, and we switch these terms in here. Now, we can simplify this expression like this, just with two this expression as a common factor and we put it outside of these brackets. Now we can multiply this term and this term. Remember that the powers get added and we have that the second derivative of y with respect x is equals to e to the minus 2t times this expression that we had in brackets before. Now we need to replace all this information in the original differential equation. We have already an expression to the second derivative is this expression that we have in here. This is the second derivative of y with respect to x. And this is the first derivative of y with respect to x. And this y not change. Now we need to replace an expression for x. Remember that x is equals to e to the t. So we have that expression in here and in here. So we can solve this operation. We have a power of a power. So the the power will get multiplying and finally we have a2 times e to the 2t times e to the negative 2t times this expression in brackets plus this constant a1 times e to the t times e to the negative t times the derivative of y with respect times plus a0 times y. In here, <coughs> we have a multiplication. We have the same base and the exponents get added. But if we realize when we add this power, we'll get zero. So these terms could be, could be eliminate in here and in here. So finally we have this final expression. We have the constant a2 times this expression that we have previously in brackets plus 1 plus a1 times the derivative of y plus a0 times y. In this case we need to solve these operations that we have in here. and we'll get this differential equation. In this case, we can add this term and this term because they're, they're similar terms. So, adding them, if we take this term as common factor, we'll get this expression in here. We can re rename that expression a1 minus a2 and we can uh, rename it like v1. In order to get this differential equation with constant coefficients homogeneous, this differential equation can be solved with the characteristic equation. Remember that the characteristic equation is just the same differential equation but instead to have uh, a derivative in the equation, we only have an unknown variable and it's to the power that we have according to the order of the, uh, of the differential derivative. 
the differential equation, sorry. So we have now the characteristic equation. And solving this equation, we'll find that one root is, for example, r equals to r1, and the second solution will be r equals to r2. And the solution for this differential equation will have this form. y will be equals to a constant c1 times e to the r1 times t plus a second constant times e to the r2 times t. In this point, we can return to the original variable that was x. So, we must remember that t is equal to natural logarithm of x, and we need to replace it in our solution. In order to, ga to get this expression, in this point, we can use an important logarithm property. That is, for example, if we have a quantity multiplying in here in front of the natural logarithm, that quantity can go up as a power of x. And same thing we will have in here. So we have this other expression. And in here we can observe that we have e to the natural logarithm. Exponential and natural logarithm are inverse function. So that means that they can be cancelled. And same thing we can do in this part. Finally, we found that y will be equals to a constant c1 times x to the r1 plus c2 times x to the r2. And in this way, we found the solution for the Cauchy-Euler equation. Now, in order to solve this time of equation, we need to remember this substitution. With this substitution, we can solve any Euler, Cauchy-Euler equation. It doesn't matter what case we have, if we have different roots, repeat roots or complex roots. It doesn't matter, with this technique, we can solve any problem of these types. So, for that, that's over for today's video lesson. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Take care.